also we have a new location within uh, eDNA Learn, which is our online learning platform called eDNA Labs. And this is uh, something we've just started. It's actually brand new. And you can actually log into our platform. Uh, it's currently a free app. You can use it uh, by navigating here and uh, clicking on checkout. So, but I will also link it within within the video, uh, around the video as well. Okay, so I can say something like, uh, like let's do something similar. Create a um, detailed data set for a mining company from Western Australia. Okay, so pretty random. Let's just see what it comes up with. You can do up to um, 10,000 rows, but I'm just going to leave it at 100 from now. I'm going to go, let's go, let's go 12 here. Okay, and then let's go preview data. This is a way to sort of see what it's going to come up with first before you generate and download the CSV. So pretty quick. So it came up with a, a I mean, totally random data set. And you can see what it kind of will look like. And then if I want to expand this, I can go 8,000 like so. Okay, and then go generate and download CSV. And then this will download it to a file in my, um, in my, on my computer. So currently, I mean, you might not be able to see it, but it's a downloads folder and um, it will download it as business scenario like this. Okay. And it's amazing. It's, it, it's amazing. Like this has been a tool that I've wanted to develop myself for a very long time. I just never thought I could actually do it. And then one day I just sat at my computer. I probably spent, I don't know, maybe half a day, maybe, maybe four to five hours on it. And I used it as a bit of a, a test case of this, um, this, this development platform called Replit. So I'd heard a lot about Replit and, um, and how, um, much more achievable it was to actually develop apps because of um, the AI assistance that they had in here. Uh, and I coupled that with, um, Claude, which is, uh, an AI model, which is amazing at coding. And I just thought I'm going to test these things out and I'm going to build this thing that I've been wanting to build for ages. And that's exactly what I did. This is exactly what I did. So I'm going to just show you a few of the things that I did in the a bit of the workflow. And it's honestly, it just gets me excited. It gets me so excited about what the future holds for the enterprising individual, right? Like so much of this was just unachievable, like totally unachievable to the vast majority of us. But I don't think now it's out of the question that, that, um, there could be 20 to 30 times the amount of developers there are now because it's just been made so achievable. I mean, to be a developer, you don't have to de develop the next Facebook or anything. I mean, you can just develop like a simple app that helps you with something internally. This helps me with many things internally that I want to do, right? So maybe I want to set up a, um, run, um, a, a demo somewhere or, uh, run, like work up some sort of analysis, create a scenario, you know, I could, I can create it in here in, in, you know, a matter of minutes, right. And, um, have the data and then start working away. So even little things like this, I mean, you can probably call yourself a develop a developer, not, no, not an expert one, but a developer. You know, one of the other things that I really learned a lot about in this process is GitHub. I hadn't really used GitHub that much when I created this. And in the last like few weeks, I have been using, like, I've got about 20 repos now. I've been using it all the time. And I'm, I'm like, man, where has this, where has GitHub been to, uh, for, for my, um, my life over the last like five to 10 years. It's, it's incredible. And the speed at which the, everyone can collaborate and utilize um, these apps in their own apps. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's an exciting future. It really, really is. Okay. So Claude, what did I do in Claude? So Claude is, uh, just like ChatGPT but it is way better at coding, like just hands down, way better at coding. And mainly because it has this thing called artifacts, which enables you to actually see what it's actually building. And so it really helps in terms of like mockups and just seeing code and, and start a code for your own app. Okay. And so I think this, um, I was going back into my chat history, which is quite extensive within Claude lately. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is the very first prompt that I made. I want to build a way to that automatically creates CSV files of data scenarios called Fizzle. I believe I need to create a simple web interface, probably the simplest we can think of that allows the user to type in a scenario to an API that generates data randomly using a Python script and then output the data and a CSV file. 
Okay, so I was pretty descriptive. Let's see what it came up with first go. Okay, so it gave me it gave me a start, right? But then as I work through here, we might actually see. Does it give me any example? No, it doesn't actually. I mean, it didn't it just gave me code? Like in some in some of these things, you get more than code. You actually get like a preview. But in this case, I just got I just got code. I just got code, and then I started by I started my own my first replet um, uh, repull, I think they call them, and started copying and pasting all of that code into here. Okay, and um, the main py file here. Like I I I personally have a bit to learn about you know, how this is all structured and stuff. I mean, I'm learning more like, every day, and and I, I learn a lot on the weekend about um, how to perfectly structure these files. But I was just copying and pasting into here. I mean, just to build a simple app, I mean, does it really matter if you don't do things perfectly? It probably doesn't, right? It, no, it actually doesn't. You know, just, just, it's better to just actually get going and you can sort of fix it later on. If you want to build some, you know, massive enterprise system, yes, you probably want to be a bit more careful, but I'm just building simple web apps that help me with little tasks, right? And I think that's going to become more and more common. So I've got my main, you know, so I just started here. I started, I, I pasted in. I mean, this changed a lot over time because remember I spent like four to five hours. I didn't just literally ask and copy and paste and I was done. Um, so my main PY file is what goes and gets, um, sends the query to OpenAI in this case, gets back um, a Python code, and then I run the Python code within, within, the, within this code, right? So it all happens in one go. The index file here, this is where all of my um, like styling is for this. I mean, this doesn't look like amazing, right? But it's, a, it's okay. It's okay. It does the trick. It does, it does enough, but just styling in terms of like what colors are used, what the background is, what fonts we're using, what the table looks like, all those type of, type of things. Those are the two main ones. Um, I think the HTML file, let's have a look. Yeah, this, this actually is all the interactions as well. This is all the interactions with certain buttons. So say I click preview data that code tells it what to um, do when I click that. When I click reset, what does it do then? Um, so that that is what handles all those actions. The main py file and what was key here was was this here. So I actually, I actually, I think I stole this from a prompt as well um, uh, that I found online. It was it was it was sort of how to how to hit how to um, connect to OpenAI's APIs with custom prompts. And so, you know, I, I generated um, a function here uh, that that goes and hits uh, GPT 4.0, has has a pre-prompt in it, and then what it does is it comes back. So when when you um, write in the data scenario here, it comes back with a very specific Python code, and then I actually in the background I run that piece of Python code to return the data, and then that is what happens on the preview, and that's what happens when we go generate and download CSV. What amazes me is, you know, not only how quick it was to sort of get this all up and running, because there's a little bit to it, right? Like, it's not it's not that simple. I mean, there's the UI part, there's the connecting to the API, there's all the buttons that I used, um, there's running the Python code. Like, there's quite a bit to that, and I still was able to achieve it in about half a day. So I was pretty impressed with it. One of the, one of the great things about Replit is it has its own AI baked into it. So what you can do, and, and this is this is um, this is powerful, right? Because what it's what it does is instead of having to copy and paste into ChatGPT, copy and paste into Claude all the time, once I got deeper into my project, I actually stayed within here a little bit more because I can actually focus on specific files in my code base and then it uses that within its memory to answer it. So it can actually have a look at an entire, like hundreds of rows of code and then provide a good response uh, for a, a small snippet of it because it can see the context of the whole lot. So so that was really powerful um, in terms of how um, the AI here operates versus say others because it's much harder to get that context into ChatGPT and that's why you always get such poor responses in a lot of cases from ChatGPT. Now, I also use this as a learning experience as well. And I, because I want to learn Python a lot better than what I, I know it now. And a lot of the time what I was doing, um, like because 
and it's it's interesting with AIs. Like I'm I'm learning a lot about just generally how to use AIs effectively. I I, I use a lot of AIs all the time. Like at, at the same time, I don't just stick to one. I have subscriptions to like anything I can get my hands on at the moment because I feel like it's so cheap compared to the intelligence that you get out of it. And I I use different AIs for different things because they're better at some things than others and they um, respond in some ways better than others. Now, this particular tool, for, for example, is not that great for like learning things, right? It's really good at providing responses. And I mean, as I say that, I think, yes, it is good for learning, but in terms of like specific things to understand Python code and to understand structure to code and things like that, I actually, you know, I always default back to data mental, which is a, which is a, our own tool. And I'll show you like some of the, some of the things that I was doing, right? So this is, this is like, you know, and this is great is for particularly, and I'll, it's just a, another tip, particularly if you're um, grabbing an open source project, right? And I've done this recently from GitHub, and then you put it in, you, you can bring them into Replit and start working inside of here. It's great to just get an outline of what's going on in the app, because sometimes it's just, if you're not that familiar with it, it's hard to, it's hard to understand. So one of the, one of the playbooks that I was using a lot is I'd go to pseudocode here, right? And I'd paste this all in. Okay. I paste it all in here. And the way we've set this up is just, just for speed for things like this, right? Speed and ways to sort of document things. So pseudocode just gives me like English writing of like how a code is operating. And it just does it in a really quick and easy to digest form. I mean, this is long, right? But this is what I was doing to understand long, longer code snippets or even taking parts of it and understanding shorter code snippets. Um, and then I was creating threads. Oh, no, I do want to turn the stream over. I was creating threads where I would go pseudocode, logic visualizer. So I'd, type, I'd paste it in again. Like so. And then this would give me the same sort of thing, but it would give me like a visual of what is actually going on. Right. And so just, just for me to get my mind around, like how these things actually operate, this is what I was, this is what I was doing. And I found it very, very effective. Okay. So once you have, um, developed a little bit more in here, what you can do is you can actually deploy your app directly in Replit, which takes out a whole lot of configuration and, um, particularly for those who, you know, if, if you're not quite sure how to deploy, it can be quite complex. I've deployed one thing before um, externally with, um, I think on uh, this thing called Net, Netlify from memory, but this is just easy, right? Like it's like literally one click and you're away, you're away. And so you can, and then you can make changes and then it's one click redeploy to the app. So as I make changes to this, you'll know that I'm just sitting inside Replit I'm just changing a bit of code. I'm pushing deploy, redeploy, and then that's pushing all my new code, right? So for example, one of the things that I haven't quite pushed out yet, so I'll just go run and you can actually get a web view of what, um, you can actually get a web view inside of here, which is pretty cool. So you can see here that there's a web view. So one of the things I've been working on, which I haven't actually pushed to production just yet, is this ability to click this out arrow here, like so, Oh, it's not working today. Oh, no, it's show scenarios. So here, here's a little sidebar, right? And I'm going show scenarios. And the idea is that you'll be able to, to look through a, like hundreds of different templates and go click and then click. And then you'll have a um, template already built in, right? And so then preview data. So just a way to find examples and find um, uh, templates of data like really, really quickly. I don't love the UI just yet. That's why I haven't pushed it. But this is what I've been developing um, post my first interaction with it. And I want to I want to improve that a little bit. I want to improve the UI a little bit before I actually roll that out. Uh, but I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Like I've, I've loaded up in this file here. Um, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of different scenarios. And I want to be able to make it really easy for the user to be able to find one, boom, click, create the, create the data. I've got many other visions to improve it as well. Uh, but that's, uh, that's, that's really it for now. Okay. I'm going to, I think I'm, I'm just going to round off here, but I just want to yeah, reiterate that I don't know how to code still don't. 
I used AI for every part of this. And I've built a simple web app that is insanely useful to me. And I think a lot of other people, um, I posted about this on social media a couple of days, like maybe a week ago and great response. Like uh, people have bookmarked, like some, some have bookmarked that some are, some are using, it. I can see that some have been long, uh, jumping in and using it. And I think when we put it inside of our new eDNA labs, I think more of our users will use it as well. And I think it can be vastly improved and that's the exciting thing. I can do it. I can do it myself. I don't have to get anyone else to help me on these small apps um, that I just want to use myself for little things that I'm doing. I think that's what we're going to see an explosion of. There's going to be an absolute explosion of these things because of how democratized it has become. Okay. It, all it takes is a bit of application, the ability to sit down and really work through um, a few issues that come up and you know, you are, Oh wait, you're a, you're a coder, you're a programmer, right? It's, it's, it's a different form um, of, of what it might've been in the past, but it certainly is the new way forward. And it's going to become, I think even, even easier as we, as we go. So the earlier you can get into it, the better. Okay. That's it from me. Thanks all. Talk to you soon.